With every breath I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. Lovely selection of songs we sang this morning. It really lifted my heart. And I was worshipping and adoring our great God and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. To this I hold. To this I hold. We need, we need faith. We need faith, don't we? And uh, as Eddie was appealing to us, do we have faith this morning? I trust and pray that every one of us here in this room this morning has faith. But where is your faith? Everyone has faith in something. But where is your faith? Where is my faith this morning? I trust and pray our faith is in the only one who provides any realistic help for us. And that's God himself. Our faith should be in God. And in his son, the this Lord is Jesus a reading from Christ. Habakkuk um, that I was thinking about this week. And uh, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the sheepfold and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. What makes it possible for Habakkuk to say that? Because he was told by God that the Babylonians were coming to completely demolish, destroy, devastate everything and take the people away and kill many, many people. So what was it when Habakkuk saw what God was going to do that God, Habakkuk could finish his uh, three-chapter um, prophecy, his psalm, effectively, in such confident terms. How could Habakkuk, knowing what was coming, say this as he finished that psalm? The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. I will rejoice in the Lord. And so in your life and in mine, there are times when we come into situations and circumstances that really are beyond our capacity, aren't they, to cope? And what is our first reaction going to be? Fear. And we wobble. We stumble. We get anxious and frightened. But Habakkuk had faith in God, his saviour. So the agricultural economy was going to be devastated. People will lose their lives and it could be the end. But he had hope. You see, faith leads to hope. I just want to get that message across. Without faith, there is no hope. So we're looking at faith this morning. Do you remember Paul and Silas in that prison in Philippi? Now, Paul had suffered trauma in his life following Jesus several times before this. Silas may not have done so. But they're in the dungeon, the darkest, blackest, dampest, most miserable part in the bowels of a, a jail, a prison in Philippi. Their backs are being beaten raw. And at midnight, what do they do? They sing praises to God. They couldn't go any lower. They couldn't find anything worse going on in their life. Their life seemed to be over, it seemed. As far as they could see. But they could still see they had faith in God. Even in that darkest moment, they could sing praises to God. They could rejoice. They could sing like we were singing earlier on this morning. Through faith. Faith. And that was thousands of years ago. What about us today? We all exercise faith every day. Every, every words associated with faith are trust, believe. Trust and believe. I was uh, sitting in an 80-ton tube of aluminium at 35,000 feet one day. I'd done it before, many times. Thank God I was blessed with the opportunity to fly with my family coming back from a, a holiday in Tenerife, one night on one occasion, maybe I was tired, I don't know, but I was sitting on that plane in the dark, 35,000 feet, 180 other people with me. I just felt very uncomfortable. This didn't make sense to me. This didn't feel very safe. I wanted to be on the ground. I had a wobble. I had a wobble, I had a worry. I don't want to do this again. I was quite in my own mind at that point in time saying, I'm not going to fly again. But I stopped and remembered what Wendy and I often said before we went on holiday with our children on holiday. On an aeroplane, we would simply say, if anything happens while we're flying, the Lord will take the whole of all four of us as family 
to be with him. <sighs> Calm down. We could go forward knowing we had faith in God. Have you noticed how restful you can be actually in a crisis? When you have faith in God. Have you experienced that yourselves? Um, a couple of years ago I had to have an operation on my eye here. I had to have a retinoplexy. A retinoplexy. And that involved taking all this stuff out of my eye, ball, out, and backfilling it with gas to push the retina back into place because I was detaching. Now, if you told me that I was going to have to have a long needle put into the back of my eye to kill, to deaden, not kill, deaden the, the nerve, optical nerve, uh, I would be horrified. I was terrified. I would have been terrified. I've never liked needles in my life at all. As you get older, do you find you have more needles? I think those of us who are giving blood tests all the time, I think we all know that experience, don't we? You have to get used to it, don't we? Um, uh, the young surgeon, a third of my age, bounded into the pre-op room, threw his bomber jacket off and his rucksack off, <laughs> he had his trainers on, he was just going to get gowned up to do my operation. <laughs> I had faith in God, less faith in the surgeon, it has to be said. He was a third of my age. But I had faith in God. I did commit it to God. I had to have the operation done if I was going to use my eyesight, lose my, not lose my eyesight. So I just gave it to God. Whatever happens, Lord, it's, I'm in your hands. And I'll just trust you. And I, for 45 minutes, I sat without moving. All I could see was white. And I was podding, prodding and pro poking and pulling and all the rest of it going on. But I was just relaxed. I've never been so relaxed. Because I had faith in God. Now, I'm no saint when it comes to... Well, I am a saint, but I'm no, I'm no expert on faith. Please don't misunderstand me. I do get my wobbles. Uh, for those Hong Kongers, that means being unsteady. A wobble. And uh, from time to time. But faith is vitally important. Do you have a personal faith in God this morning? If not, what do you have faith in? What are you putting your trust in, if not in God? Is there any other source of faith that can be anywhere near as competent and able to help in time of need than our God, almighty God. Faith, it's defined in the Bible as the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And surely we want to please God. We're going to have to face him one day. So don't we want to please God? To do so, we need faith in God. When I was in Sunday school a few years ago, uh, I was taught to how to defi define uh, faith. That's five letters in the English. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Forsaking all, or leaving all aside, I trust him. Forsaking all. When all is stripped away, when all is taken from us, when we've got no in ourselves any confidence uh, and competence for dealing with a situation, what do we do? We give it all over to God. And that's my experience. I want to share that encouragement with you to show faith and have faith in God. My cousin, uh, his wife died and uh, he, he, there was a funeral for her. She was a humanist and she wanted a humanist funeral. So we travelled up to Cheshire and there was a beautiful building and uh, there was a lovely wood beyond the building and a pathway leading from this building up into the woods. And we were going to have a humanist funeral. And the, the officiating person said some lovely poetry and some nice words and talked about how we have lovely memories. Let's hold on to the memories and through the memories the person will live. And that was it. We took the basket up into the woods then. A lovely setting. And the basket went into the ground. And that was it. My cousin afterwards came and said to me, David, what did you think of the funeral service? Well, I was... I paused... I thought, what am I going to say? A year before, he and I were at the funeral of our uncle uh, near, in Llanetli, near Swansea. And I had taken the funeral service. And I had talked about the resurrection hope, the Christian hope, the joy we have as we can anticipate that death is not the end, it's the beginning of eternity with our Saviour. And I spoke of hope. And I had to say to Richard, I'm sorry, the service, Richard, was hopeless. 
I, I think he knew what I was going to say anyway, and that was the end of the conversation, unfortunately. Let's be practical this morning. One of the signs of depression, which is very prevalent in many today, is hopelessness. And those who are paralysed with depression, and that's how it is described, uh, will point to examples of others who do not get better and then just, they just get worse. It reinforces their hopelessness. But then clinicians are treating depression. And they can, de they can um, treat uh, depression effectively with um, treatment, uh, changing the treatment as necessary, and so on, and giving assurance and hope. And they have to give hope to the patient. Without hope, there is no chance, is there? No, without faith, there is no hope. And I'm saying to us this morning, we need faith in God. It's even more important. Yes, we, can, we, can, we work with the clinicians in our various aspects of our health issues. But at the end of the day, we need faith in God. Those of us who know and love God and have faith and declare we have faith, we must put our hands, yes, into the hands of those who are experts, but we must combine it with our faith ultimately, most importantly, in God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Therefore, since we are justified, what? By faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. It comes through faith brothers and sisters in God. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Christians in Corinth, could say to them, examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realise that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Is Jesus Christ in you this morning? As you sit there this morning, Look inside. Have you got faith in Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ in you? Are you sure that Jesus Christ is in you this morning? Test yourself. Well, it's a long introduction to a short message, Read, really, I promise you. Just got two points to make. And the first is, did you fail the test? For those of you who failed the test and are honestly sitting there where you are now, and you're not sure that Jesus Christ is in you, then let me say something more about that. First of all, this is what the Bible says. It's the best place to go for, for help when we're looking for understanding about it, what it means to have faith. In Romans chapter 3 we read, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. This is, the true, this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone. For everyone has sinned. You know what that word don't mean? Don't, you know what sinning means, don't you? It's an English word. It describes an arrow when fired at the target and it falls short. It misses the target. And we all miss the target. Because Paul goes on to say, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. That means in right standing with God. And that's where we have to be. We must be in right standing with God. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. Because there is a penalty for falling short of God's standard. And no, people don't like to talk about it, but it's a reality. God, to whom we owe everything, and rebelled against him by going our own way and being selfish. Ultimately, sin is self-pleasing. Then there's a penalty for rejecting our creator God and turning to go our own way. I've just begun reading my Bible again through. It's good to just try read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and keep reading over and over. Just out in Genesis again, chapter 3. And what happened to Adam and Eve there in the garden? They wanted to go their own way. They selfishly wanted to be like God. And that was, the, that was the beginning of the fall for us all. So there's a penalty for our sins. The penalty has to be paid. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin, or the payment for sin. 
People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood on the cross, of course. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? It's vital that you do. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal, going free, is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith. There is only one God, and he makes people right with himself only by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If this is your first time in church, you may not realise that being born in the UK, the great UK, does not make you right with God. There are people who still think that. They think they're born in a Christian country. It doesn't make them right with God. Being born to Christian parents, great advantage. <coughs> Wonderful blessing, that is. And some of us can thank God for that. But that does not make us right with God. Being christened as a baby does not make us right with God. Going to church, coming along here today, does not make us right with God. Watching songs of praise on TV, on BBC, whenever they manage to fit it into the schedule, does not make you right with God. Attending church every week, reading a Bible every day, praying every day, that it does not make you right with God. It is the payment made by Christ through his own blood, which we've remembered this morning, that makes you right with God and faith in that. Ongoing reliance, faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ makes you right with God. Is Jesus Christ in you this morning? Examine yourselves. Is Jesus Christ in you? Test yourselves. Do you want Jesus Christ in you this morning? I'm sure you all do. Well, the good news for everyone, the name of our, new ch our charity, Gideon's it used to be, but now it's good news for everyone. The good news for everyone is everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a promise. Do you want to call on God this morning if you haven't done so already? You can do that with me now if you want. If in what I've been saying you're convicted and ready and understanding that you need your sins forgiven, I'm happy to, to recite a prayer, a model, maybe yes. You can pray it yourself. You can use your own words if you wish. But if you want to say a prayer with me now, if you're under conviction of your sin, God's righteousness and judgment to come, then you can say a prayer. And he examines your heart. You can say it's inside, but he'll hear. If this is the expression of your heart, you can say this prayer with me now. I confess to you, God, that I am a sinner and fall short of your standard. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died for my sins on the cross. I believe that you, Lord God, raised him from the dead. I now repent of my sins. I receive him as my saviour. I confess him as my Lord. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, please realise that just simply reciting that prayer is not a magical incantation. But God actually searches your heart and he knows exactly what you want, what you believe, what you're asking for. And God promises that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It might be good to confess Jesus is Lord to somebody, even today, before you go home today. Be good to confess Jesus is Lord to each other. It's always good to confess that Jesus is Lord. Part two of my message. So you've sincerely prayed that prayer. Is that it? Job done? Coming back to the analogy of flying an aeroplane, I remember sitting in the departure lounge and you see how people will just wander around. They've got their tickets, their flight tickets for the fl where they're going in their pockets and they're just killing time, sitting around, reading a book, 
going to a Costa shop. There are other Costa chains. There are other coffee chains, Eddie, aren't there? Um, just waiting to go and take their journey. And sometimes I wonder if people, like, Christians are like that, or people who think that they made a prayer of profession like that. They've got their tickets for heaven. They put them in the pocket, and they just carry on life. Just amble along. No change really particularly takes place. They're just waiting to go when the time comes to depart for heaven. That's not how it is, brothers and sisters. It's not how it's, not how it's meant to be. The job has not been done. You've got the ticket. You've got the entry. You've, you've come into faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you're made right with God. But is that all there is to it? Let's read what James has to say. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your deeds? Can such faith save them? Can that kind of, save, can that kind of faith save them? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, goodbye, and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't do anything. You don't do anything. I'm, I'm struggling to read where it says there on the screens in front of you. I must get my eyes tested again. Effectively, what I've got in my translation, I've, I've got the wrong translation on the screen, unfortunately, for you, sorry. But does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Um, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? And you see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. Not by faith alone. Not just by some kind of words we recite sometime in the past. Not some confirmation class we may have gone to 10, 20, 30 years ago. Or being baptised in the baptistry 10, 20, 30 years ago. That is not what is a saving faith. If that's all it is that we rely upon. James talked about Abraham. What did Abraham do? He left his country by faith. He went to another country he didn't know about. He settled down in that country. And then he even, at the, in, in his hundreds, <laughs> he was called upon again to prove his faith by taking his son, his only son Isaac, and offering him as a sacrifice at the place called Moriah. And God saw his faith. God saw his faith because of what he did and credited him as righteous. It's not just by saying words it's doing, it's action. Our faith is made complete by what we do. We show mercy, we show generosity. Today, this morning, if James was here addressing us instead of me, would he be referencing the terrible need of the families in Turkey and Syria? Or the suffering that's going on in Ukraine? Even today, right now? Or even nearer home, would he say there's a great need around you? What are you doing about it? It seems very sad to me that people professing to be Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, simply attend church. Now, I said that doesn't save you, but it is something to do when we are saved. If you are saved, if you have a saving faith, you do attend church. But you do all the other things of living the normal Christian life. The life that is described to us in the Gospels and in the letters of Paul and John. We live out our Christian life. We don't just sit back and go from one Sunday to another Sunday. Sitting in the chair, coming along, receiving and going. There's more to the Christian life than that. We live it every day. Every minute we live this Christian life. So deeds are absolutely vital to make our faith complete. 
Otherwise, what kind of faith have you got? Is it a faith that is going to save you? Is saving you? Get involved in the Christian life in the church here. We, we need workers in the church here. And if you haven't got a particular work that you can do in the church, come and talk to us and see how we can talk with you about what you can do. There are physical things you can't do, but you can talk about other things you can do in supporting the work of God from this place as we shine out the love and the joy in knowing Jesus Christ to the world around us here and encourage each other. Join the coffee morning team. Come and help on a toddler group on a Wednesday morning if you're free. Uh, help the youth on a Friday night. Show hospitality. Invite brothers and sisters around who perhaps uh, they're, they're single they've, or they've lost their partner maybe. Invite them round for hospitality to your home. Give them a meal. You may be entertaining angels unawares. Join the worship team. There's so many aspects to the work of Christ that we can all be involved in. And by being involved, that's reassuring us that we have faith, a saving faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We do these things because we have faith. So, where is your faith this morning? So many people rely upon themselves. Out there, who are not in church today, they'll be relying ultimately on themselves. That's the only source of faith they've got, is in themselves. And when, that hits the, when the rubber hits the road, as they say, what do they turn to? How can they cope? What a joy it is for us to have faith in God and to be able to sing with these praises with great confidence and hope. Even in the darkest times, in that dungeon, like Philip, Paul and Silas, we can praise God and sing because that absolutely overwhelming confidence, assurance we have of hope. Without faith, there is no hope. So examine yourselves this morning, brothers and sisters, to see that you're in the faith, that Jesus Christ is actually in you. If he's not, let's pray that prayer with me. Come to the forefront at the end of the service. Come and pray that prayer with me. I'd love to pray with you and help you and lead you into a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of his Spirit. You're not to rely on a, making a confession of faith some years ago, but you need to have a meaningful faith today. And you need to demonstrate that to yourself first and then to others. The writer to the Hebrews said this, We have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. And this is another important point. We need to show this faith and have this faith to the very end. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 14. It's not something that's done in the past. Not something that's being done now. We've got to be resolved to having faith, not just today, but into the future, as long as that might be. Let us all share in Jesus Christ and enjoy him by faith, even today. Thank you very much.